Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a part two on one of my most viewed videos, which is how to create amazing environments. This is going to show you a couple uh, tricks you might not, uh, not be aware of already. Um, also, a few things to avoid or common mistakes people tend to make when it comes to terrain and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, let's get straight into the video. Before I get into the video, I mention this every video, but make sure to join my Discord server if you want, like, you know, feedback on your work and all that kind of stuff. And join, be a part of the community more. I'm trying to get this uh, server more active. Uh, also, I'll be doing giveaways and stuff like that. If you haven't already checked this, uh, my previous video out, um, there's going to be a giveaway in the previous video in the next couple of days. So if you go to my previous video and check the at the ending of the video out, they will give you details on the uh, on the giveaway. I'll be uploading this roughly uh, around the same time uh, or like a, f a day later or something so make sure to go back and check that video out if you're interested in joining the uh, giveaway. Okay so the first tip I want to mention is people often tend to do this when they create islands and stuff like that but once you paint like a or you fill in just a, a cube of you know a square of water people tend to you know just grab the uh, the paint tool and paint some sand on top of that and just start creating an island and stuff like that but one thing you should bear in mind is under the uh, the terrain you just painted there's going to be gaps and stuff like that if you're swimming in your game and stuff like that you want to make sure there's no gaps at the bottom um, you should fill up all this with sand or something like that so you can't actually fall out the map the amount of times I see this in uh, different games and even in popular games you know it's a small thing but it's quite important if you're swimming um, if there is swimming in your game the second thing I'd like to mention is I've touched on this in the previous video a little bit which is kind of blending assets in with your terrain but what I mean by this is uh, like a, a good way or an advanced way of doing this is if you paint kind of like a a hill here let's say so you kind of have like a you know like a, a border or like a steep cliff so you want to obviously paint as I showed in the uh, previous video you kind of want to paint the edges with like rock or something like that but a good way to blend your assets I remember in the, in the previous video I mentioned um, actually using rocks and stuff like that but there's another thing you could do which is kind of create these assets of like a cliff edge something like this you know I'll kind of uh, circle it around it so you can kind of see how it's made make sure to add like these kind of smallish uh, details and stuff like that because it really develops like the the level of detail in your map and then you can kind of just you know just uh, plant them around the uh, the cliff edge so it makes uh, it kind of adds more detail into your map before I mentioned like the the rocks in the previous video this this is kind of like a step higher um, you know you can create a couple of variations of this or something like that and you get like a, a nice detailed cliff edge like this it's really simple really easy and I highly recommend it because you know it just makes your cliffs look a lot better obviously you'd probably blend uh, the terrain uh, better with the uh, the actual cliff edge and stuff like that but for the sake of this video I'm not gonna go too complicated like if you flatten them out like so here it kind of looks a lot better when it's flat. Another issue I often see is when people create kind of like pillars using terrain, they kind of just, you know, uh, do this and then, you know, just add around and kind of leave it. This is kind of like a, just a dull looking pillar. What I'd recommend you do is kind of, you know, flatten the top, um, you know, so there's walking space ac across the top so you know you can maneuver across the. Uh, the pillar and stuff like that and once you've kind of flattened out the top so you kind of have like a, a platform at the top you know you're gonna notice this a weird shape so you want to kind of fill in you know make it a gradual kind of gradually thicker at the top like so and now you kind of have like a you smooth it out you can have like a, a nice little pillar an actual platform you can actually walk on um, more often than not, I see people kind of create pillars like this and just leave the top. They just kind of go around like this. And it's a, an odd shape and stuff like that. It's really, really strange. I don't know why people tend to use this, but I guess, you know, it's faster or something. 
but yeah, I recommend kind of flattening out the top, you create a better pillar. Also, when making archways and stuff like that, I tend to prefer having mine, you know, so you can walk on them and, and stuff like that. So, I tend to grab a flattened out, um, use the flat tool and just flatten out like this. You know, I'd create another pillar here. Roughly, you know, the same way I did the, uh, the other one. So, you'd flatten out the top. And once you create... I see this so often, but once you create um, an archway, make sure to fill in these gaps here so it kind of creates a curve rather than, you know, leaving it um, flat because then it just looks strange. And now you can, you know, do your terrain painting and all that kind of stuff. Now, another way of, you know, creating great uh, environments is looking at your shadows. Now specifically, if you go to your lighting, so I'm gonna drop the workspace down, go to my lighting, you know, you wanna add a sky, you wanna add sun rays. So you kind of wanna, sometimes you wanna build, to create like a different aesthetic towards your map. Let's say you're walking this direction. You can uh, kind of tilt the sun so it points like this way. So when you're walking like, this direction the sun rays kind of point towards you so basically what I'm trying to say is change your lighting depending on your scene and basically if 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 there's like a an area of high importance make sure like the lighting is correct and the sun is pointing the right direction to add that more like uh, feeling of like ambience and stuff like that it's gonna be hard to kind of show that off in this kind of like mess of a of an area but if you use your imagination a little bit, I'm sure you can understand. Basically, direct your lighting in um, specific areas rather than just leaving it like you know up here, because you know you get the, these these beautiful uh, sun rays and stuff like that, which you can really take advantage of uh, depending on you know your terrain and stuff like that. I hope you guys enjoyed this short little environment um, tutorial. Let me know if this was useful or not. Um, some things, you know, are up for interpretation, uh, depending on, you know, your point of view and all that kind of stuff. Let me know if this was useful or not um, by commenting down below. Uh, other than that, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to check out the giveaway in the previous video if you've if you've stayed this long in the video. And also, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me. Peace.